go. Welcome to another episode of Out of the Blank Podcast. I'm here with Kelly. How are you doing today, man? I'm doing all right, Kelly. That is an amazing name, and I need to read the rest of that shirt. I can explain oh. it to you, but I can't understand it for you. I feel like people need that shirt in reality. You know, I uh, I do some guest lecturing at my local uh, JC here, and uh, the topics that I that I, that I lecture on are, are pretty interesting. You know, things like esoteric messaging and uh, advertising and whatnot. Um, but I always wear this shirt every time I go and I present myself in front of a class full of college students. I wear this shirt purposely. <laughs> I think me and you and the messaging are kind of hinting at it, but the fact of there's book smarts and then there's street smarts. Right. Absolutely. I feel like a lot of people with book smarts are missing out on essential things like street smarts. Like, for instance, I'm not going to say her by name, but there is a beautiful woman <laughs> that went to my gym and she was like, can I get some of that brown stuff and some of that stuff? I'm like, you want protein powder and you want strawberries? Yeah, the berry, like the, the heart shaped kind. I'm like, <laughs> what does this person do for a living? And then someone told me, oh, she's a plastic surgeon. I'm like, no fucking way. She's a plastic surgeon and she doesn't know what a strawberry is. And they go, oh, well, she's lived a lot of her life on her parents' money and kind of gotten to the place that she's at now because of her parents. She hasn't really done anything for herself. I'm like, so she's gotten everywhere based on her looks and her parents' money. I was like, I'm so right. glad I am not good looking at all. And I can just learn through nobody giving me anything. You know, to be honest, man, I have not skated through life on my good looks, as you can obviously tell. Um, and I have no money, so that has got me absolutely nowhere. Um, and you know, I've had to, I've got a kind of a good, I'm, I'm lucky because I have a good combination of both book smarts and street smarts. Um, I was raised kind of rough. Um, my dad was kind of, uh, you know, I didn't know my dad too terribly much. He was kind of in and out of my life, but you know, he wasn't, uh, he wasn't the best guy in the world. I'm not saying he's the worst guy in the world either, but you know. Um, he taught me a lot of things um, that I'm glad he taught me because it's it's kept me alive, man. I've been able to survive out there in the real world, man. And, you know, a lot of people can't do that. A lot of people freak out. They get they get you know in contact with things that are like people. I I produce cognitive dissonance. <laughs> I'm a big I'm big time into that, man. And like when people meet me sometimes for the first time, or you know, like a person like me for the first time they experience cognitive dissonance they're like holy crap like is this sky for real and yeah i'm 100 percent legit um <clears throat> but i lived a pretty crazy life you know it's it's like uh you can go out and buy a 1968 corvette convertible that you found in a barn and it could look pristine brand new never been driven or you can go out and and buy a uh um, you know, like a 2012 Toyota Tundra that's got 500,000 miles on it, and it looks like hell. It's not the age; it's the mileage. If that makes sense. It's it's really about the experience <laughs> of things. If you look at the mm -hmm. fact that absolutely if anybody asked you or asked me that I would want to take back any of the hardest moments of my life, I would tell them no. On the factor of, I think they have turned me into the person I am today. I've learned a lot from my mistakes, and I've learned to grow from those experienced hard times and learned how to perceive through them. And if you want to do a car correlation to it, it's like if you come across a car from the 1960s that it might be beat the hell up, but those beat the hell up moments are. Our history it is a right. story that is told it's the reason why i'm literally all my stuff for my studio was on top of a table that is covered in knife marks covered in coffee stains covered in all this stuff from every podcast i've ever done when i used to do these in person my buddy getting drunk and spilling out his feelings as well as spilling out his coffee all over my table and it's like those experiences are what when you look at somebody that is 40 Absolutely. in their 50s and they look like they don't have have shit like they don't have they, it's just a blank slate of cells i'm like where was your story where's your experience you don't have anything like that where did that come from they're like spent all my time inside the house it's like ah oh, like right absolutely people that worry about freckles she'd be worried about the freckles or embrace them the fact that that's just a a story to be told 
You know, we have a very brief moment here on this earth, man. Um, it comes and it goes, man, We're like dust in the wind. And I'm a firm believer that we, you know, the, the late great professor Stephen Hawking taught me one thing that, that has stuck with me for years now. And that is that information and energy can neither be created nor destroyed. And so that means, you know, we're an electromagnetic being. There's evidence of that, you know, and somewhere, someday that electricity has to go someplace, man. Whether you believe in God or not, it doesn't matter to me. Whether you believe in heaven or hell or not, it doesn't matter to me. What matters to me is that scientific evidence shows me that I'm going to be someplace. And the only thing I'm taking with me, man, it's not this junk on the wall behind me, man. It's not the treasures that I've accumulated. It's the experiences that I have. Data, information, and experience, man. That's what we take with us. <clears throat> we are electricity. We are energy. And, you know, that's how information is stored these days, man, through information and energy. And we take those experiences with us, man. So if you, you know, if you believe that, that you're an electric being like I do, then, you, you know, you believe that you have to go someplace. When, you, when this physical body dies, your energy's got to go someplace. And that energy is comprised of everything that you've ever experienced. And if you have no experiences, man, what charge do you carry? <clears throat> Well, besides Robert uh, Rice introducing us, uh, a little bit about you from what we've talked about, too, is the fact of, then when you look at life, I mean, do you want to say you made it through it, or do you want to say that you lived one? You know what I mean? Like, I know so many people where it's like, there are times in our history, like my grandparents, for instance, that didn't have a chance to be able to do what they wanted in this world that is free only because of the factor of they had to learn to grow up fast. And it seems like nowadays there's an ever amounting pressure to become something, become famous, become an internet star, become remembered. And I brought up this quote where Robert Price, I, why do I say Price? I always think of him like Captain <laughs> Price from Modern Warfare because he's just got like that look to him. But, you know, he's an ex-Marine. And uh, so, you know, that's why he has that look to him. Well, <laughs> He, Robert Rice uh, quoted me on something. He said, you should write that and put it in a book. And I said, is it better to be remembered by millions for a second or be remembered forever by few? And I think it's better to be, have those everlasting impressions. I might walk into the street and do a nice act and that person can forget me a minute later. But for the people where, you know, I've gone through my hardships and people that reach out to me like you, You've, you've given me a chance. You've given me something to talk about. You've given me a friend. And hearing that, I'm like, fuck, that's what this world is about, is about creating something, but also not worried about being the number one Vine or YouTube celebrity or being the next Leo DiCaprio or Johnny Depp. It's about being you and finding out what that is, is the biggest challenge of all time. But also, is it so hard in a world of competitiveness? to just be cooperative when it comes to helping everyone else succeed, I'm more than willing to put my path of success, whatever it is, and destroy it, delay it, whatever, to get somebody else to their goal. On the factor of, I feel so much better doing that than just being like, I fucking made it. Yeah, that's nice, but I'd rather watch somebody make it. I'd rather watch someone be like, holy shit, can you believe how this has grown since this and this? I'm like, good. Thank you. That happiness I can feed off of, like a fucking gremlin I'll feed off. <laughs> Amen. And you know what, dude? This is such a relevant conversation to what's been going on in my life lately. Like, while you were saying this, man, like so many different things like went through my head um, that I don't even know that I could address all of them in the time we even have today um, to talk about these things. But, you know, you're absolutely right, dude. Like, so one thing for me is... You know, we talked about that, you know, I customize little cars, all right? I also do a lot of different kinds of art. Um, and something to me that's really important is back in, back last year, I took a survey of approximately 500 of the kids that uh, I lectured to. And that I go, to, I'm also a full-time student as well as a guest lecturer. Um, so, and as well as taking um, surveys of the students that I went to class with, and one of the most amazing things in the world to me was I asked the question several times over and over and over. Does anybody in here know who John Lennon is? Fuck, dude. And the, Hold on dude, a second. Almost it's, nobody. I'm, Go ahead. I'm John Lennon. 
I'm John Lennon of the Beatles. I don't know much about the rocking and the rolling, but I can tell you all about LSD. Dude, I'll tell you, the number of hands that went up in the classroom, brother, were so few. John Lennon is almost a memory, and he's only two generations removed. You know what I mean? Dude, then, I mean, think about the mark that he made in his generation, bro. Seeing these kids out here today, dude, for me, I don't know how you, how old you are, man. I thought you were much older um, why from listening to you the, talk. Oh, dude, uh, I thought you were my age or fucking older, dude. I thought you were probably in your 50s or 60s. I look at you right now. I'm like, oh, holy cow, dude, like, this kid is young. And you know who John Lennon is? That's impressive to me. Okay. You know, boom. I will tell you this. Both my parents are DJs and radio hosts. So I, nice. grew, I grew up knowing my dad as Peter Chris from Kiss because he was in a Kiss tribute band. So if I okay. didn't know who John Lennon was, that's like, get out of my house. You're not my kid. <laughs> but on the factor of, yeah, I, I definitely think conversations have aged me beyond my years. I'm only 22 years old. But on the factor of like, that puts in such a huge perspective into what does it mean to be fucking famous everybody right? wants it everybody i don't think anybody wants to feel like they were just here and then gone but i'd rather be famous with people that actually give a shit you know what i mean right. not like i don't give a fuck about being a poster on a wall i don't care about being joe rogan i don't care about any of that what i care about is where i can see somebody grow and know that like i've done everything i possibly can to help them and even if they surpass me good please do because seeing that right. happen is so much more important because even someone that's messaged me back from my very first episode was like, dude, you helped me. Like, thank you. And I'm like, I'm 500 episodes later. So that's a full year and a half. I'm, like, <laughs> I'm glad it's nice doing that. But damn, dude, that puts in a perspective. Kids are forgetting who John Lennon is. It's like, dude, that's like one of the biggest, dude, the two biggest names in the whole world, as far as I know, were Jesus Christ and John Lennon. And both those names are being forgotten today. Now you know what I mean? As fast as possibly. <laughs> These are now The Rock and fucking who else? I don't even know. Dude, they, they, they change, dude. They change from minute to minute, man. The new idols change from minute to minute. A year ago, what? Extin Extin I don't even know how to say his kid's name. Extinction died. You don't hear anything about that now. Everybody was all up in arms. Oh, X died, X died, blah, blah, blah. And now they're just like on to the next fucking fad. Boom, instantly. Boom, 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 boom. They don't know who that guy. Ask people, who was he? And they're like, oh, well, I can't even think of his songs. You know what I mean? It's just like, wow. And so. Is that going to usher? Is, in, hold on. That's going to usher in a whole new area of creativity. If people think on this matter of what does it mean to be, you know, if you're so famous and so popular, but then you're on, they're on to the next trend. If people think like that, is that a problem with humanity or is it on the factor of we've replaced everything we've created in society with branding and wanting to be this new trending thing. What about creativity? What about absolutely? It? That stuff has you know, a longer impression onto us than anything. Anything that absolutely. you create model-wise, so for instance, let's go to that, the cars. That yeah. can go into Robert Rice's whole thing of why he loves the DeLorean so much. He has models of them that you've created for him. You've created an everlasting impression onto him that's going to last forever. Well, certainly. And, well, and that's just what I was going to approach, man. It's like – so. This is a very popular hobby amongst people, man. Like th this company made billions of dollars last year, Hot Wheels, you know what I mean? And there are lots of companies that are taking on this role now. And this is a thing that like fathers and sons get into, mothers and sons. I have a friend, Annie, who uh, she, you know, her and her son have gotten into this hobby together. And he, she wakes him up at like six o'clock. She was making videos yesterday of her waking him up at six o'clock in the morning. Let's go, uh, let's go hunting. And let's, you know, they were sorting out and they were, they were customizing these cars together and they were family bonding over this thing. And this is a generational thing. Now, it occurred to me, like I sat for years and have tried to figure out how do I leave a legacy? How do I leave my mark on this planet? And you're right, by helping people do something and achieve something is going to leave a mark. And I feel like I have put an influence now into this person's life um, through my art and through, you know, talking to them and hanging out with them and stuff like this. Um, over Instagram, I've influenced this kid now to get into this hobby and his mom's into this hobby. And hopefully that kid will pass it on to his kids and his kids on to his kids. You see what I'm saying? And hopefully like these family traditions will carry on. And now by creating little car art, you know what I mean? Like, let me see if I have something here. Just as an example of something that I've made. I, most of my stuff is inside right now, but I, you know, I make these little cars or whatever, um, customize them. And then 
they go out throughout all over the world. Like I've got customs on, on four continents, 10 countries, and in 42 states here in the States. So I am making, that's still, that's, I'm making some sort of mark and legacy. Now they may not remember my name, you know, four generations down, but they might still have that little car in their pocket. You know what I mean? They maybe the grandkids, grandkids, grandkids are going to be having those little cars with them. You know, like this little car was passed down from my grandpa and he got it from some crazy dude that he met on the internet. And he'll be like, what's the internet? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, you know, like we don't use that stuff anymore. That's, that's going to involve, you know, something that's going to turn into a complete monster. I can tell you that. Oh yeah, dude. Absolutely. You know, it's, it's already, if it already hasn't, it is, it is more and more each day. I think that's why but, people want to be movie stars and musicians on the factor of their legacy is going to be recorded and remembered kind of as like a thing that will never go away. But who's to say if the internet just completely is gone, what's to remember yeah. or anything like that? Where's the handheld stuff? The reason why I got really addicted into thrift shopping and I would look for vinyl records. And if I said mm. that to any other kid my age, like what the hell are you collecting those old ass <laughs> things? For? The art on the walls. I am looking at an Ink Spots record right now where it's just a nice. black and orange, a blue and a red dash of paint on a front album cover. But it is art. I have a million of them hanging on my wall. I got the Bill Cosby one where you can sense the evil in his young face. Then I got a Stephen Martin one where he's just like dressed up in a bunny suit dancing on stage. I got a Meatloaf one. And then I have a, what I called a red speed wagon at the time where I got slapped in the back of the head and my dad's like, it's Mario, you jackass. Yeah, but like you see that and it's like, this is all culture. I like looking through those things. I like seeing Absolutely. all the of arts and the designs on and then it also digs up a thing where i can look on my spotify like holy shit here we go it's reo speedwagon i'm listening like wow like it's something where everyone has this mentality of wanting to be remembered and loved by everybody well everybody yep. on the world is not going to love you maybe a lot of people might not know who you are but if you create something that you want to create and you're passionate about something that you're passionate about there is no holds bar to what you can do absolutely absolutely you know i think part of my part of my drive it to be remembered is i really don't have much of a family like i didn't really know my dad i have no grandparents they're all gone um there's just, you know, it's it's basically, there's not much of a legacy for me to leave here. Um, my only blood child is a daughter, um, so she won't carry on the family name, most likely. Um, and so, <clears throat> it occurs to me, and, you know, I, over the years I've learned that, you know, making friends is hard. Um, I used to have friends. I grew up with people. And my mom always told me like, these people will not be there in 20 years. I promise you. And there are only one or two of those people who are still around after 20 years I, out of thousands. There was a point in my life, man, where I couldn't walk into a grocery store in a city that I lived in. And I lived in a city with a million people and I couldn't walk into a grocery store and not like have somebody say like, Hey, what's up, Kelly? Hey, da -da -da. And my, my ex-wife hated this shit, man. Um, because we couldn't go anywhere without me being known. And that's for reasons that I don't really want to get into, but, um, I enjoyed a, a minor degree of extreme popularity and, and like success in the area that I grew up in for a number of years. Um, but that's all changed now. Like I'm relatively unknown. Like the people who, the people who buy my cars know who I am. The people who have bought my artwork, I have some artwork out there that I've sold, you know, like paintings and photography and stuff like that, some photographs and stuff, but, um, and some, you know, some, even some company ads that I've sold and stuff like that, but those are all fleeting successes, you know what I mean? Like, <clears throat> I can relate. Really? I mean, in my town, for instance, both my parents were huge personality radio DJs where my dad was like, just say your name and say who you're related to. And they're going to give you the job. And I'm like, yeah, but then they're going to look at me and think of your kid. You're, right. oh, you're his son. You're his dog, you know, you're whatever. And I'm like, no, I want them to remember who I am. And I want them to see me for me. If I'm going to build up a relationship, it's going to be as Robbie, which I've always prided myself in. I'm not a good person. I'm not a bad person. I'm just Robbie. You have to take me as I come. And I think, that's Amen. the most important thing. Why do you want to sit there and model yourself after a celebrity when you should be modeling something off of what you want to be? You want to be famous. Right. 
okay, well, you're not going to be the fucking rock unless you take steroids and eat 50 pancakes. For breakfast <laughs> after it's not going to happen. So right. find out who you want to be. You know, the biggest revelation of that came when I'm just sitting in the middle of the night and I had before this podcast started a phone call from a buddy that led up into the start of this thing when he was telling me how he was on his roof. And I'm like, what are we all trying to do? And the ever amounting weight of just wanting people to love us is just insane. When we can just talk to each other and realize it's so easy to get along, but we'd rather be at each other's throats because it's, it's, I, I, what? It's because it's, it's funner. Why is being evil more fun? Let's, let's try and be nice. Right. Well, you know, man, like, so I've been under attack for the last few days, man, like some serious under attack. And I mean, like physical attack by people like in my life who I thought were my friends because I was involved in an organization and I'm not going to name any names or anything yeah. like that, but I was, I was involved in an organization and they, I tried to be like, yo, let's all promote each other. Let's fucking promote this organization. Let's fuck with the S with the, uh, with the Instagram algorithm. You know what I mean? Let's, if everybody's out here posting and reposting and reposting, even just your stories, you know, I mean, people were telling me like, I don't want my feed looking at all blah, blah, blah with other people's crap on it. And I'm like, well, you know what? Cool. Whatever. Post it on your story. It goes away in 24 hours or post it on your feed and then delete it in a few hours or, in a, you know, tomorrow or the next day or whatever, man, or archive that or do something, man. But you know what? You're part of an organization and you think you're an individual, but if you want to be an individual, that's great. And I support individuality. And I think everybody should be, individuals but part of self-pride is taking pride in the, in the associations that you make as an individual and the organizations that you represent and to me if you're going to be part of an organization why be part of an organization why be present in that organization if you're not going to participate in a team activity in a thing to support that organization to promote that organization that's not pride in yourself because you are ashamed to be part of that organization is what it appears to be to me. And so, you know, all I'm telling people, I was trying to tell people like, you know, let's do this. Let's get together. No, don't like, don't take me. I don't give a crap. I don't need promotion. You know what I mean? I, I know who I am. I'm secure in who I am as an individual. I have self-identification. My name is Kelly Ray Diffie. And, you know, I'm an artist. Um, I'm a father, um, I'm a lover, I'm a fighter. I know who I am. <clears throat> I don't need to be promoted by somebody else. Um, <clears throat> but let's get together and, and find some people who do need promotion, who do need, like, you know, we, we, in the, in this industry that I'm in, that I'm in this hobby that I'm in the community that I'm in, I don't want to call it an industry. Um, it's been industrialized recently. Um, and I, I go with the flow, but so it's a community, first of all, and the community that I'm in should be growing. It should be being supported by other members of the community. But, and Instagram has established itself as the primary like social media platform for this hobby and for this community. It's really like, it's a, like the other like Facebook communities are real like. Well, Instagram's a picture. Nasty thing, so to each other. If you, sure. If you put up art, it's going to be like, oh, they're just going to look at the photo, double tap, and then move on. That's the whole point of Instagram. So if you're an artist, if you're a chef, if you're anything like that, you're going to become popular quick. But right. if you look at the reason why I don't join communities, I don't join giant groups, I don't get on podcasting networks and stuff is because I want to do this all on my own. I enjoy, right. you know, my conversations. I enjoy the connections I meet. I enjoy help from friends and stuff. But when you start becoming a network where everything needs to be about promoting, 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 and doing all these types sure. of things, I'm like, then you're required. And I'm like, if you're not about it, then don't join it. But people want to join that type of community, want to join that type of organization, and don't want to promote it because they want you to help them. They don't want to mm -hmm. give help back. And That's I literally exactly go, it. I'm more than happy to help. But I don't want somebody, you know, I can only run myself. I can't have, I, could, I had a radio offer to do this show on a radio, but then they would give me a list of shit to say and advertisements right. and all these things. And I could be getting paid for it. I'm good because then it's not me. I need to build this myself. I'll help my friends. I'll talk to people that want to get out there and get out into the world. But I never have to worry about someone saying, hey, you need to do this. Hey, you need to do that. Hey, you need to do this. I have a problem with authority. I can't fucking do it. I, I'm like, you I, know, I, I get it. I get that, man. I can understand that. 
And that's why you don't join those organizations. But the people who do join those organizations need to give into those organizations as well as the organizations giving to them. You know what I mean? And that's kind of what I was trying to let these people know is like, you know, we've developed a family and a community. So as an organization, it's not a typical type organization because it doesn't function without everybody's help. You know what I mean? So it's not about like the organization that I have now created is not about me and my self-promotion. It has my name all over it, but the boys who helped me create this wanted that name. They chose that name, not me. I had nothing to do with that. And I just kind of got placed in the whole president position. Like I didn't want that. That was cast on me. <laughs> but you know what? I saw a need to fulfill that role because they wanted me to fulfill that role. They were looking for some sort of leadership in this organization and in this community. And so like, that's what I'm trying to provide. You know what I mean? Is I want this community to bond because this community has potential to go two ways, really good or really bad. And what, I want to see the, it. the background behind the community for people listening? Well, you know, it's, it's we're a Hot Wheels community, little car culture, small car culture, um, 164, 118, 124 mod scale models, you know what I mean? And so what that is, is like going back into like the, even as far as maybe like the 30s and 40s, we had car, little car companies that were producing miniature cars, toys for children, um, especially like overseas. Um, Germany was real big into producing little cars, uh, models of their war equipment and stuff like that. I think that might have been some propaganda stuff, but the United States had their car companies too. And Lesney was a company that came out in the, maybe like in the 50s or 60s, um, producing like Matchbox. And then, you know, you've got Mattel that's involved with Hot Wheels and they've taken over Matchbox now and they've kind of absorbed each other. But so, but again, you know, it's like, it's a car culture. There's a lot of people who are into the one, one you know, full scale car culture. And a lot of people can't afford that, <laughs> especially in today's economy. Yeah, I know. You know I, what I, I mean? Like, I'm spending money so, every time I go to Walmart to get my buddy Hot Wheels because he has he wants a certain car or something because that's all he wants. <laughs> every Christmas, I'm like, what do you want for Christmas? I want Hot Wheels. It's like, what the f – like 50 of them? What do you want? Like I'm trying to spend a budget here, and you're giving me like a dollar purchase or something, so I have to buy a shit ton of them. But like I see him, you know, he puts them up on his wall. He's got all the Fast and Furious models. He's got every single muscle car. He likes the ones that look actually real, not the ones that are like giant car. Right sticker on the side of it or completely ruin the car where it's like why does this thing have flames upon flames but then right. i look at it from like the ones i bought him like seven years ago to the ones he has now and i'm like wow that one's actually worth some money now and it's kind of vintage and it's a pretty cool collectible compared to like there's one that's a fucking gopro mount i'm like what is mm -hmm. happening isn't cars yep. supposed to be classic not like this is the terror racer you're like the fuck's a terror <laughs> racer it's got like <laughs> helicopter propellers as wheels i'm like i don't know what's happening so you know there's so many different like aspects of this of this hobby because there are fantasy castings you know as you can see by looking back here man most of what i've got going on here are realistic castings you know what i mean because i'm into the hot rods and stuff like that but there, there's rick and morty there's he man you know this is a childhood memory of mine i've never watched rick and morty but i love the spaceship and somebody the other day said that they were listening to a conversation between me and another friend of mine or like reading an instagram conversation rather and they were like it was just like watching an episode of rick and morty but with two ricks and i'm like so now i've got to figure out who this rick character is i gotta watch rick and morty now um sometime this you know this week um and, and figure it out but you know there is fantasy stuff to it and like there's more to it like the the more realistic I can make the cars look, the better. You can put like rubber wheels and rubber tires on these things, you know, and you can change. There's guys who go out there and like cut the hoods so that they open and have opening hoods and opening doors. Some of those castings come like that. Some of these models come like that, but some of these guys get out there and make that happen. You know what I mean? And the, the amount of skill and, and, and tech that goes into this hobby is crazy. Um, there's other aspects of it. Like I like to do races. We get, I get together with a whole group of friends of mine and we do little hot wheels races online. You know what I mean? Um, I set up a track, I record the videos, they set up their tracks, record videos. We send each other cars to race against each other. There's a lot of crazy stuff that happens here, man. And especially like, you know, in this, in this sudden like COVID world that we live in or whatever, you know, where we're not supposed to be around each other. Um, stuff like that's a really great way to bond with people. You know what I mean? I have found some really cool bonds through these through this hobby with people um i've started doing tutorials teaching people how to like do this type of work i've had people like ask me can i make a youtube channel can i expand into other things into other fields um other social media platforms and stuff like that um <clears throat> and i'm real comfortable on instagram where i'm at um i'm just gonna say that so 
I might look into a YouTube channel at some point, but I'm not a Facebook fan. I don't like a lot of these social media platforms. Some of them are confusing. Some of them are, you know, just well, a lot of them turn into like this, like Facebook, for instance, is like, if you have depression, just go on Facebook because everybody's posting a meme about depression where it's like, I laugh at that because I understand it. And it's like really hard sure. like, to see the trends of things. Now everything's like Facebook's filled with parents or it's filled with people that are trying to promote something. <laughs> Instagram's like that too. It started off just being pictures of sunsets and then people started turning into business and it's good for business purposes. Now there's always going to be something new that's trending. It's always going to be times you're going to be changing, but I'm like, like, sure. When does the classics come back to the point where you can have fun and enjoy social media without it turning into this nasty cesspool of violence and hatred? Dude, you know, wow. <laughs> I experience it every day, so you're not the only person. Everybody experiences the reason why Twitter yeah. is such a fucking dumpster fire. It blows me away, man. Like, <laughs> Twitter is such a dumpster fire because everybody's <laughs> got to treat it like dog shit. Everybody's got to treat it like their personal, like it's the scene from Jay and silent Bob where you find out who's talking all the shit on the internet and you go to their house and beat the shit out of them. Like that should be the repercussions for doing anything on social media. Right. You know, I think because there's a degree of anonymity on social media, people think they can get away with saying and doing fucking mean things to each other. And I don't know why people want to do that anyway. You know, like I grew up in a violent lifestyle. Okay. I've hurt people and I've been hurt by people physically, mentally, emotionally, whatever, man. Um, and I have no desire to do that to anybody. I don't want to hurt somebody physically. I don't know why you would push me to the point where I would have to. Why would you approach me and try and do something to harm me because of my skin color, my religion, my race, my whatever the fuck it is that you don't like about me? If you don't like me, get the hell away from me. You know what I mean? I'm a pretty cool individual, I think, and I try and help people out. I'm, I'm a really nice guy these days. I've, I, maybe I'm a little too nice. Maybe I have some stuff in my past that I've been trying to make up for. But um, for the most part, that's neither here nor there. For the most part, what it boils down to is we are all human beings, man, and we all need to support each other, take care of each other, especially right now in these times, you know what I mean? And it's just, it's getting more and more hateful, more and more, you know. It, well, it just, boggles just, my mind the people that look to social media as a form of therapy because, I mean, I can understand where they could find a way how to, but, like, the reason why I can sympathize on, like, the models and things is the factor of, like, it was always difficult as hell for me. Honestly, I hated models, but my grandpa loved the shit out of them. And watching him do a model, I was like, why are you kind of, not a Playboy model, like an actual, like, fucking. <laughs> and he's customizing and painting a war model, like a warship. And I just go ask him, like, how do you do that after having such an intense life? And he goes, because that stuff never goes away. And this helps get my mind off of it, where if it does come, I could process it and I could put my pain into this. And I was like, oh that's where it goes like where do you put your pain in social media you air it out in front of everyone to hear some things right. don't need to be posted some things just need to be in private and you need to deal with it on your own but when you start turning to sympathy from social media you really have lost the battle because those people are what i call false likes where it feels like oh i complained about my day and it feels like a nice little pat on the back and then the next day you get two likes three likes four likes five likes and then you post again and then people just forget about you because it's sunday and nobody's checking their phone on sunday and then you feel like nobody loves you and then it turns into this whole mixed paranoid schizophrenia upset lifestyle and i'm like you got that conversation you got that feeling of being loved from just having a chat with someone and being real with someone and that's the whole point of this podcast is to just be you be real i'm not i've had people that like message me go i can't believe you had this person on don't you know what they did no because that's not why i had them on to and we all make mistakes in life i've made plenty of mistakes <laughs> right? but it's like what the fuck are you so angry about you're gonna sit there and shit on somebody for it's like get on with your life are you is this gonna matter 10 years from now 20 years from now when you're in an old folks home and you're eating tapioca pudding like is that at the end of your days you're like that son of a bitch i swear i'll end this it's like what what's Holding on, <laughs> holding on to anger is like feeding a monster that never gets full. It's so much easier yep. just to move on with your life and just. But any negativity, you know, jealousy or 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 
anger, like you said, anger or just any kind of pain that you feed, that you do give that acknowledgement to, will just continue to, to want more, to want more, to want more. And as you're talking about all this, I'm thinking about like, you know, like how cool would it be if everybody posted something positive on social media about themselves or about somebody else just for a day? I just wonder what that would be like if we just saw like nobody was out there trying to attention seek or nobody was out there trying to like, just like, blah, 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 look at me. <clears throat> Through social media, I've noticed a few things. I have a couple of thousand followers, whatever. Um, most of them don't know who I am. Most of them never interact with me. Most of them never see my feed. Most of them, because they follow 10,000 other people or whatever. And so they have a very limited interaction with me, if any at all. And so like, I always tell people like, I'd rather have 50 followers that I know and interact with every day and that I talk to. And I, I can be like, Hey Rob, what's up, man? Like, you know, I, maybe I didn't get the chance to talk to you yesterday or last week or whatever, you know, but, but we, me and you, like from now on, we will probably have like little connections where we're like, you know, like next week when you're not busy sometime, you're going to be like, Oh, Hey, that dude, Kelly, Hey, what's up? Or maybe I'll be like, Hey, that dude, Rob, what's up? But <clears throat> we will make connections. You know what I mean? You will make some real connections through social media. I feel like you have the potential to, I don't know that everybody I, does or that everybody will, but I have made some amazing friendships, dude, Robert Rice, dude you couldn't make a better friend than that in the world yeah. i promise you seriously you know i i told him like everybody i've ever podcasted with i remember every conversation and i know i've said it before in this thing but seriously like i just the i the other day i did a recording that i had released and i mentioned somebody that was on episode 126 that still follows me and i sent him a message I was like hey i mentioned you in a podcast like what i'm like yeah i think i pronounced your name right it happened to do a little bit of like your name is jean like it was like it sounded like a French thing, <laughs> and he goes, "Yeah, you remembered." I was like, "Dude, I remember everybody." It's it's. I will mention you if it comes up right. in a conversation. If I think, oh, that that relates to that, I will bring you out. I will give you a shout out, only because I don't forget people. Because what else? Like people that can sit there and just forget a face, forget a name. If you don't have a fucking medical condition that makes you do that, then they <laughs> you didn't have the right impression with that person. You have people right. you hate, you have people you love. I just tend to make a lot of my connections on the basis of liking people rather than hating people. And I think a lot of people need to give people the chance. Need Absolutely. To engage in that conversation because it's a story you never know where it's going to lead. Well, you know, I try and tell, I try and spread that message a lot too. You know, we can be very like receptive to things as people and we can be very ignorant to things. And most people seem to be very ignorant these days and they'll make statements about things like these blanket statements or these ignorant, like half ass, like not thought out things to say to somebody. And then like, you don't know what that other person has gone through because you haven't taken the time today to say, Hey, what's going on, dude? Like, how are you? What's What's, you know, what's, uh, what's going on in your life, you know, and not, you know, we're busy. We don't necessarily have time to keep with each individual like that, man, but don't go out and say something mean or cruel to a person because you don't know what the fuck that person's going through. You know what I mean? Your mama jokes. I'm famous for your mama jokes. And we all have said, you know, da, 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 your mama this. And then, you know what? Like, then there's that one day, like my mama died on this day 10 years ago, motherfucker. Thanks. You know what I mean? Boom. And then like, you know, I'll fuck you up. That's how she, you know, you don't know what's going on. Don't make a your mama joke at somebody because you don't know. Maybe their mama died 10 days, 10 years ago, 10 days ago today. I had, I had an episode. You on, know, uh, this, this has probably been one of my roughest months. I've had, I've lost three friends and that's not me saying it for sympathy, but I've had a Absolutely. woman the other day that just straight up came at me. She was like, you fucking kid and just started going off about my generation. I'm just sitting there like, what did I do to you? to deserve that but then she, like i mean i get it all the time and now i just learned in my life this call people out on their shit i had a dude the other right. day throw 15 dollars at me and that's what at my gym that's a day pass so you would get mm. a day pass in the gym but he just chucked it at me and walked into the gym and i was like hold on a second pick it up and hand it to me he goes what right. and i'm like I'm not that into this job to where I care if you treat me like shit. So pick it up and hand it to me if you want to work out. And he's sitting there like, come on, dude, seriously. Like, I just want to get my pump on. I was like, I get the gym fix, but don't be an asshole. Right. I'm a person. Yeah. You're interacting with me. Come up and treat me like a human being, you know, like throw the, excuse me. The fuck is wrong with you? Yeah. <laughs> you can't take two seconds to walk in and say, Hey, good morning. How's it going? Here's my money. Hand it to me nicely. 
what the fuck? Dude, people are hateful people out there, man. We're, they're so centered. They're just, I get it. There are days when I wake up and I'm like, I fucking hate the world. I do not want to interact with anybody. I go back to bed. Go back to bed. Dude, get away from people. Turn off the phone. Don't go fucking out in public. Find something to do. You're supposed to be self-isolating anyway these days. <laughs> you're the only Whatever. one. I, you're the only one I talked to today. I made a pact today to not be on social media for anything. Uh, mostly. Well, because- you know, and I understand with yeah, with what happened yesterday. Yeah, you know. So, and I told Robert Rice, I said this is going to be a very weird interaction for me because I am a car guy who's going to be talking to somebody who lost a friend yesterday in a car accident. You know what I mean? And so to me, first of all, I apologize. I'm, I'm very sorry for your loss. No, it's good. It's, okay? it's, look, life you know, happens and coming from it a does. place where, you know, my 2020, like everybody else's probably hasn't been the best. Honestly, it's been the worst year of my life. But I don't, I don't, like we could talk off air about it, but I don't really, people are like, why don't you focus? We want to know more about you. I'm like, because there are so many amazing things that are going on with other people where I'm like the last person that really needs to be a complaining. I just, life is so full of payments. It's why I don't have a Patreon. It's why I don't have anything. I literally make my merchandise for my show free. Basically all you do is pay for the materials to get it made and you get them like I don't get any assent from it because I will never charge for my content on the factor of thank you for listening and people that do that, like give me $5, you'll be able to hear it. I'm like, wow, like somebody wants to listen to you. And I'm like, this world is so full of payments. Fuck it. If I can't survive on my own, uh, I don't, I, that's not living then. If you, if you're living off a of Patreon payment, I'm sorry. I'm like, but I get it. People that make their own like customs and stuff, that's a craft and that's a job. And that's what you should get paid for. But for people that anybody can just listen to your stuff for free and then you charge people for bonus content, that to me is just like, nah, 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 nah. Right. You know, that's, you know, I get that too. You know, as a customizer, as a Hot Wheels customizer, one thing that I get a lot is how do you do that? How do you make this piece? How do you, and you know what? Like I've asked guys and they've been like, Oh, that's a trade secret. What the fuck? I'm not telling you that you're trying to take over my business. No, I'm not trying to take over your business. I just want to know what the hell is going on. Like how to do it. You know, and when people ask me, cause I'm trying to make something here. Maybe I don't have $300 to pay for your custom, you know? And, and, so one thing that I've done is I, I try and make, make the community better by I have figured out tricks on how to make very cool cars. <clears throat> and if you ask me, how do I make my tarps? You will find out exactly step by step in detailed, like text messages to your private account, how I make the tarps for my, and how I apply them so that you can do that yourself. Maybe you don't have $30 to buy my custom. I get that. I want you to still be able to do it. I want you to still be able, I want to grow the community. Go out there and do it and then show somebody else how to do it. And then show somebody else how to do it so people can enjoy this hobby, man. Like this is a stress relief. This is a form of therapy for people. This is all, dude, I'm telling you, little cars make the world go round for a whole bunch of people. And it's crazy to me. Like I never, I got into this hobby I was, as a child, I collected these things. I played with these things. I have some of the best childhood memories I could ever like conjure based around little cars. And as I grew up, I learned about real cars because of my interest in little cars as a young man. Well, if you look, at, I like, got out of little cars for, for a while. Instance, like a secret, for instance, people that have like a secret family recipe. What happens yeah. if that person dies and that recipe is just gone forever? Like, gone why forever. Are you never going to spread that information around. If you keep everything a secret because you're afraid someone might do it better or you're afraid someone might steal your thing. Then you're just totally missing out on information on the world. If, if can- somebody can take something that I've done and improve on it, if I can tell you how to do something and you can show me how to do it better, dude, we've both grown. We've made the world a better place. We've bettered our art. We've bettered ourselves. We've bettered each other. You know what I mean? Secrets there are, are going to be people. Secrets are meant I- for, well, secrets are meant for Victoria because she never tells her secrets. <laughs> you know? There are people who, no matter how much I tell them my secrets, they aren't going to go out and do this. And they're going to come and buy my customs. There are people that if I keep my secrets, they're not going to buy my customs and they're not going to know how to do it. So 
if I keep that secret, what, how have I benefited anybody? If I share that secret and somebody else goes out and does it and does it better, that the only thing I can do then is improve my game. That means I have to learn how to do it better than they did. And that's healthy competition. That's growth. That's industry growth. That's community growth. That's growth of knowledge. That's, that's exponential growth, man. <laughs> you know what I mean? Isn't Share that, the knowledge. Isn't that, Share. Isn't that what the world kind of needs, though? Is just everybody helping out each other? We are. That's what I'm saying. So give. Let me let me give you the secret. Because if I tell you, you're not going to go out and make the custom, but you might see something and you're like, "Wow, I know how he did that, and I still want it." So you're going to buy it from me. Yeah. Your brother might go ahead and make one. Whatever. <laughs> the point that I'm getting at is that we have to grow stagnation is no good so we have to share i share industry secrets i don't give a crap who they're with but I mean, they always say magicians never tell they never share their secrets you know what? it's important for a magician to share the secrets because if you're the last magician and you die like you said with the family recipe who's going to carry it on yeah you've lost something important that is a perfect thing is that a magician may never reveal his secret but a legend gives it out like you know what i mean there like you. that's the whole point is you want to spread the love not I keep it locked away. If no one else can exactly. see it, no one else can enjoy it as well, then you're really just doing yourself a disservice. Exactly. Exactly. I, I really wish we had more time to talk to you, but I am in kind of a time crunch here. Hey, Would, you know what? You hit me up anytime you want, Rob. How about All right? this? I don't care. If let's let's we're gonna recontinue this onto a part two so we can go on a okay. little bit longer, right? But like I said, I am in a bit of a rush right now. So recording one's gonna end here. From where we left off at, uh, seemed like we had a lot on our heads going on a little bit with how the world's kind of turned into a little bit more being selfish rather than being, I guess, there's the rare few out there. And we never even really got onto your car, like the, your, your car passion, dude. Like talking about making these little Hot Wheel cars, these little figurines that actually last an impact. And I remember you telling me, and it's really stuck in my head since the last time we talked. It's been a few days. Um, but my uncle actually collects old school Hot Wheel cars. Um, he's a tattoo artist. So I remember as a little okay. kid always going into the bathroom and he would have them all lined up. I mean, these classic cars from like like the old school packages that had so much dust on it. I was like, where'd you get that thing? Out of like, I don't know, a coffin? And then he'd be like, oh, shut up. That's like things older than you. But I can see what you were talking about with the fact of how it's you literally like, it's like having a kid. It's like passing down a legacy. Some kid's going to find that in his pocket. A kid like me going to a thrift store looking for vinyl records is going to come across a Hot Wheels car. And that could be your invention. And the sad part is, like, how do you, I guess, make sure that you know that's yours? Like, do you put any type of symbol on it? You know, um, some of them I do. Some of them I don't. Um, most of them I don't sign. I usually don't sign them unless I'm requested to. Sometimes I, I do carded cars. This is all like standard stock stuff here, but you know, whenever I talk about a carded car, it's one that's still on the card instead of being a loose car, which is one that's out of the package or whatnot. But so sometimes I'll do recarded cars. <sighs> well, I'll deal with that later, but sometimes I do like repackaged cars. I, I'll customize my own car cards. Um, I've got a buddy who makes cards for me. Um, and so a lot of times I get asked to sign those. Um, and then sometimes I just sign the bases, but the problem is like it's paint, so it can chip off. It can be erased. It can be whatever. So really it, that's the difficult part is like, you know, really just creating my own style is the stylization is really the, the easiest way to tell what's mine and what isn't. I try and do things that other people don't do. Um, <clears throat> we've gotten into this culture. I noticed you and Robert were talking about this the other day, and I was just speaking with Robert um, moments before you and I, uh, Rob Rice, before you and I uh, started the podcast again today. But uh, I noticed that you guys brought up something during his episode, and that is branding. Like, we don't, we as a society are not interested in the unique talents of any individual we all want Taco Bell. We yeah, all want a package that says Taco Bell on it. <laughs> you get to see that when you watch the show Pawn Stars. The guy goes, okay, who, who made that? I just saw a video. A guy made a 15th century samurai sword. And the guy kept asking, well, who made it? Who's the owner? Who's the, who's the samurai sword maker? And they ended up looking it up, and it wasn't popular. It wasn't known. 
Um, mm-hmm. A lot of the times there were a lot of people doing those small craft things. It wasn't so rare. Like if you try to find a blacksmith today. So he was like, right. I'll give you four grand for it. I'm like, it's from the 15th fucking century. And you're going to give him <laughs> four grand for that. That's at least a 10 grand thing. That's a piece of history. And it has all the proper identification. It was a family heirloom. But no, as people, we don't give a shit about that. We give a shit if it's called Gucci, Versace, anything that's these number one. Oh, let me tell you a story now. I went to Vegas with my cousin and he's like in love with shoes. So many shoes, more shoes than you have cars. I swear to you. Like, I, I, I know some guys like that, man. I got a buddy, Stan Jay, who's like that, dude. He opens his closet and shows videos, and it's like, dude, there's got to be $50,000 or $100,000 for the Jordans in there, dude. I'm like, what? <laughs> you know what boggles my mind is the fact that when I ask him how many are in his size, he goes, none of them. And I'm like, so you just buy fucking shoes to buy shoes? He's like, yeah, because I wow. can sell them one day. And I'm like, are you going to sell them? He goes, no. I'm like, oh, my God. So you're just like, collecting shoes. You have a foot fetish. That's what it is. But when we look at collecting those compared to – I mean, they're just a name, Jordans, everything – that it's just a brand if i toss out the word jordan i can immediately spark up the thing there's a giant thing going on between supreme you know that bullshit just the word supreme you can label mm-hmm. they sell fire extinguishers they sell shovels they sell hats umbrellas all this other type of stuff and all it does is says the logo on it but then it immediately gets increased by like 800 900 dollars i'm like hang on a second i don't even know what supreme is a supreme quesadilla from taco bell is that what we're buying <laughs> Right. You know, just the name brand is so powerful, man. Just the the branding in that name. And it's crazy, dude. It really is because there's a lot of like superior products without that name brand for far cheaper. You know what I mean? And they just don't get the recognition, man. Um, It blows my mind when we're talking about something like that. I about to say the main point here is like for people listening, when you go to a thrift store, if you ever, I mean, please take the first chance to go to a thrift store. The things you will find, you'll be like, holy shit, who threw this away? You know, another man's trash is another man's treasure. That whole thing. I'd learned that my first time. I bought a Nintendo 3DS for five bucks. Like <laughs> Absolutely. Games, and that's like hundreds and hundreds of dollars of GameStop. But if you look at when you go somewhere, spend a little extra time trying to find something that doesn't have a main brand thing on it. Everybody, when they go to the store, goes, I want this. I know exactly what I want. I've been researching it. How do you know? I always look around. I know you right. sometimes I like to be the guy that goes into the store and gets out, but I like going to the back. I like going to what hasn't been sold because a lot of the times it's the things you're going to find the best and it's cheaper. But it's the same factor of like, you're going to come across something that's so fucking rare. Like somebody coming across one of your cars compared to if they just found a brand new Hot Wheels car. Can I get the one that is more customized and looks a little bit different? Maybe it might look a little bit less flashy than the Hot Wheels car, but maybe that's what I like. I think it's having that extra eye. A good example is when you go to an adoption center to go get a dog or something, when you go to the SPCA or whatever, Worcester County Humane Society, whatever you want to call wherever you live, you go and you find and you see a dog that has been cute. That looks cute. Like, I'll take this home to the family. But then sometimes you come across something where it stops you and you look at it and you pick it up and go, I'm taking this one home because you connect with it. Right. Let's connect Absolutely. with more things. Well, you know, it astounds me, man. Especially like, you know, I'm going to go back to the hobby for a second here, the cars hobby, because <clears throat> it's the topic of debate <clears throat> between me and a few people that I know. For example, you know, I mean, and – I attribute nothing to the amount of followers that I have on Instagram or any other social media platform. It really means nothing. There's bots, there's people who follow me and then never, like they see my stuff one time and they never come back to the page. You know what I mean? The algorithms are all screwed up on Instagram, whatever the exposure rate. But something I noticed, like the community at large seems to be really interested in this commercial idea. And it's like, look, we were talking last night, me and a couple of buddies, and it's like, look at my collection of cars. I have a $30,000 Hot Wheels collection that's just like yours. Nothing unique, nothing individual, nothing special about it. I bought it all at the store. It's all just like, I mean, there's 100,000 people in the world who have the exact same Hot Wheels collection. And that's why I got into customizing Hot Wheels to begin with, is because I was like, I want something unique. I want something different. I want something that when people look at it, they're like, oh, whoa, where the fuck did you get that? Because, you know, I don't have one of those. I can't find that. And to a degree with a certain portion of the community, 
that's a really popular thing. You know, the custom, the customs are really like, and I mean, I don't want to toot my own horn or anything like that, but I feel like I've, I've pushed this community a lot in that direction. Um, there are guys out there who have way more followers than me that do way more stuff than me, whatever they, they you know, they sell in their customs for two or 300 hours a piece. It's some flashy paint, some decals. I'm not going to name any names. I'm not trying to start any fights. And you know, that's cool and all, but they're mass producing. They're doing the exact same thing that Hot Wheels is doing. They're mass producing these cars, the exact same car, and then auctioning or raffling them off for exuberant amounts of money. And while that's cool and all, it's not something that can't be done by a lot of people. I try and do unique things with my customs. I try and, like I said, you know, it's my style. My stylization is different than anybody else's styles um, for the most part. Now, there are guys I've, I've noticed, like, there are guys out there who are starting to mimic my, my styles a lot. And, you know, there's only so much you can do when we're dealing with 164 paint, you know, model painting and stuff like that, you know, so, but, um, so there are going to be, you know, things that I copy from other people and things that other people will copy from me, that, 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 but develop it into your own style, you know what I mean? Don't just go full on, like, I'm going to replicate this because I don't know, man, I watched at the beginning of this whole COVID outbreak, I watched Demolition Man. And if you've never seen that movie, you should watch it because it is about our future. It is about what's happening right now. It makes references to this event in that movie, several references. Um, the cutest thing I think is like they, they have, they don't use toilet paper in the future. They use three seashells. Sylvester Stallone is in this movie and uh, um, I want to say Wesley Snipes. And so it's a really good. Oh, dude, you have to go. You have to go watch this movie. Apparently, you haven't seen it, and I implore you, dude. It's like two or three bucks to rent on like any platform, any streaming platform, three ninety nine. In the future, every all episode, restaurants are Taco Bell. Every episode, all restaurants. Every episode of mine turns back to poop. I don't know how it happens, but it just always goes <laughs> back to poop. Let me tell you something. What's interesting about if you want to relate to a different episode, so. <clears throat> I relate it to SpongeBob, for instance, for a lot of people out here that are just, or not SpongeBob. Let's relate it to, oh God, this is going to kill me if I don't, Fairly Odd Parents. For a lot of people out there that are probably around my age, they know what the Fairly Odd Parents are. So when everything looks the fucking same and they couldn't find Timmy Turner to get him to grant his wish and he had to make something and put it on top of him, it's the spark of individuality. You have that mm -hmm. inside you, you have what makes you you. <laughs> everyone's going to, there are going to be people that are going to try and copy you, try and mimic you, think they can do it better, but it's never going to be your style. It's the same thing. If you go to a kitchen for every day for 10 years, the next thing you know, they change a chef. You're like, hold on a second. This does not taste right. Is, is, is Herbert. Okay. No, Herbert doesn't work here anymore. He moved to a different restaurant. Well, well I'm moving to a different restaurant. Cause I don't, I don't taste the familiarity. We're okay right. with, we we're built to assimilate. We're built mm -hmm. to do this thing where we have to be just like everybody else. And, you know, we have these passions, but we never show them. Why is I have that? to interject something right now? Because you, you, made, so you made a statement that kind of I can't agree with. You say we're built to assimilate, but I don't believe that. We're built as individuals and are programmed to assimilate. Yeah, we are. We have been programmed through, through advertising, mass media marketing, all kinds of shit, man to believe that we have to have the same thing that everybody else has and half the people that we think have this shit don't even have it. You know what I mean? There's a reason these guys are having to sell shit for 900 bucks. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because they need to make that one sell for that one Gucci bag. You know what I mean? Um, that's not marketed towards the, to, towards the common man, but the common man buys into it. You'll find like, housewives and house husbands and stuff like that who buy into this shit man this qvc lifestyle about like i gotta have every new product on the market because i gotta keep up with the joneses i, I have gotten like completely out of that shit man <laughs> well, i think when i meant by built you're thinking i meant like born i meant like no like from the start when you're this blank little baby you're constantly being thrown into a like a vortex of just hey you need to do this you need to be like this you need absolutely to be like, this. You need to be like this and that's why when you look at people that have a lot of wisdom are people that have been left alone people that have been kind of pushed away and rejected by society they turn, they're rejected for being different they're rejected for the spark that is kind of the same thing as I don't want to go like that. I want to try this way. I want to be a little bit above average here or in their minds, it would be different. And right. if, you, if you look at that, all those people are inventors. All those people are amazing artists. All those people are something creative because they just, they couldn't, I can't function in a nine to five job. 
Nobody, mm-hmm. I don't, I, I know very few people that can say that. I know a lot of people that prefer to be outside. I know a lot of people that love the nine to five of, I like to wake up in the morning, go to work and I'm home by five o'clock. It's like, no, I like to go to work at 1am and I like to be home at freaking 10 o'clock. Like that's how I like to roll. And it's hard to find a place in this world for that because this world is so factory farm to make you live just like everybody else and keep society progressing. But society hasn't really progressed. Technology's gotten nicer, but the world has gotten shittier. And in my mind, that's not progression. Right? You're absolutely right, man. There's a trade-off there. Um, we're making a serious trade-off. Technology for quality of life. Um, I love being able to connect with you like this through the phone, through Zoom, and like I don't know where you're at in relation to me. I live in Flagstaff, Arizona. Um, so... So see, this conversation would, this, this would not be possible without technology, but you know, that, that's a good use of technology, but we have so many negative uses of technology, man. Like how many people are sitting around right now with their hands at the genitals because they're addicted to Pornhub 24 seven, you know what I mean? Like things of this nature are, you know, we are wasting time, man. We are, we have one life to live and moments to live it in. And we waste so much time just doing frivolous Think like of the genital thing in a positive way. Right now, there's probably a person jacking off to both of us. <laughs> I am. I, I'm. I'm convinced that most people usually do. Um, I have a sexy ass voice. I really um, feel like when people watch me now that I'm thinking about it is like how many times do I use such <laughs> mannerisms where I'm always like screaming or shouting or something, and some person just like pause. It's like, oh god, I'm in the most unflattering angles. <laughs> right right you know like <clears throat> being animated being humans being people you know we all have that stuff and you can take the, the the best looking people in the world and find the most unflattering images of them and there's actually a photographer i can't remember his name i wish i could man we studied him in a photography class to, uh, a couple of semesters ago um but he takes these very like personal close-ups of very famous people with, like without their makeup on and stuff like that and these people look like me, they're ugly, they're horrible looking. They're like, wow. Hold on a second. <laughs> you brought up a really good point because I looked at the fact of, I used to be like, I used to be when I was a little kid, I had, I had freckles all over my face, you probably can't tell, but like, I used to be so upset with them. I used to hate them so much. And I remember I wanted to be just like this actor, Jensen Eccles. I was watching him all the time. He plays in the show Supernatural. I was like, fucking <laughs> handsome guy. I'm not gay, but that dude is handsome. And I was, I literally would put lemon juice on my face to get rid of the freckles. And then I found oh, saw a photo on the internet of him without makeup. And I was like, he has freckles. And they're like, yeah, he's using makeup. I'm like, what the fuck? Like my mind was just completely blown. I was like, oh, everyone is trying to hide their flaws. Let's stop fucking doing that and just own up to it. I'm very, very random. I will admit to that. That is my biggest flaw possible. I'll be in the middle of Walmart and totally forget what I'm in there for. So this brings up an interesting story, man. And this story, I might get very emotional doing this story. This story is very hard for me to discuss. <sighs> Years ago, I used to do electronic modifications for a very popular game. Um, <clears throat> and through that avenue in my life, I met a child, a kid. Now, first of all, um, if you're letting your kids play Grand Theft Auto, you're a shitty parent. Go stand in the fucking corner and think about that. If your kid's under the age of 15 and they're playing fucking Grand Theft Auto, you are a shitty parent. I'm sorry. I play that game. I've been playing that game since the first rendition, man. Um, and I love that game. I'm a huge proponent of that game. I push. Everybody should play Grand Theft Auto unless you're under the age of 15. Plenty of hookers in that video game and never uh, one right? in my everyday life. Well, you know, and you know, that's 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 cool because you're you're a well adapted individual. But let's face it, man, garbage in, garbage out. Go eat chocolate all day and see if you don't have diarrhea tomorrow. Same thing with our brain. <clears throat> okay. I, haven't, I haven't eaten in a month. That actually might be a good thing. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> on a nor- with a normal, on under normal circumstances, it's not a good thing to, do, to have Look, that I issue. I think we can both but, agree I'm not normal out of anybody here. Absolutely. And you know what? Um, <clears throat> that's a good thing, man. That's a good thing. That's it. Otherwise, I don't think you and I could be having this conversation if you were just a normal person, you know what I mean? Because 
let's face it, it's hard to have conversations with normal people sometimes. <laughs> I, it's the wet, it's just the wet towel personality. You start talking to them and it feels like you're just getting drained. Like, what's happening to me? What are you doing? Absolutely. But so going back to this story now, we place so much value on physical appearances, man. I met this little kid. He was 12 years old. Um, and I'm not going to use his name or even his gamer tag. But him and I got to talking and just doing whatever, just through the game. You know what I mean? Now he was hanging out with a bunch of other people and whatnot. And they were all kind of crowded around me. Because when you do electronics game modification, people tend to flock to you. Um, <clears throat> they all want that money drop. They all want mod my cars and do this and do that and whatever. And, you know, I was always kind of, they call me the people's modder, man, because I always did shit for people for free, man. You get these people out there like trying to charge for this shit. And I was like, nah, man, we're going to do this. But that's, that's regardless. So I got to know this kid after a while, man. He was always like showing up in these groups and stuff. And I got to talking to his mom one day. Um, she got on the headset and was like, you know, you really, you've really done some positive things for my son. You know, you've really helped him to kind of socially adapt through whatever it is that you guys do on this game. And I'm like, well, that's cool. You know, I'm glad to hear that. And then she goes on to tell me the story about how only a few months before, and he's a little black kid, um, but she had come in, they were British. Um, she had come home one day, he came home from school and he went upstairs right away and wanted to go take a bath. And she went upstairs to check on him and he was bleaching himself. He was in the bathtub full of bleach <clears throat> because somebody had placed so much value on his physical appearance that he need that i mean that breaks my heart dude i like i said it makes me emotional to talk about that um <clears throat> and i love that kid you know what i mean that kid was he was an amazing person dude inside of his skin i have no idea what the hell he looked like never seen a picture of him don't even care but inside of his skin he was such an amazing person and people would not take the time to get to know him because he was different in some way than the group of people, the majority group of people around him. And they made him feel so awkward and so awful about that beautiful, unique difference of his that he fucking was trying to assimilate himself through one of the most dangerous fucking practices I can imagine. <laughs> and it just, it broke my heart, man. And so I really took time after that to really kind of, you know, for some period, for some time after that, me and him just you know, I talked to him a lot about stuff like that. And hopefully, like, I don't know where he's at today or where he is. That's been several years. He's probably, you know, 17, 18 year old young man now. And I hope that I have done something to improve his, his, his outlook on himself um, to the point where he's not doing shit like that anymore. Um, because he was just a badass. And for somebody to make somebody who's so fucking cool like that feel that shitty about themselves, man. Like, I, I can't, uh, we're all people, man. Be good to one another. It's a simple message, man. We don't have to be hateful. Everybody wants to. That gets lost in transmission. I was going to say. Like, <laughs> Absolutely. That, that had me uh, a little bit. I'm not going to lie. I was about to tear up when you started going down that. Glad, uh, you know, at least. I think it's just, it sucks, man. Because the whole factor of, I think bullying is sometimes needed. But the point is it's only needed when it's gone right when it's way past you look back on it and it made you a stronger person hopefully but i know so many times where it it's just like a dark tunnel that just it's just there's no light there's nothing it's just like i don't want to go to school i don't want to do this and i don't want to do that and man it gets so difficult to hear something like that because i think we pick on things that obviously are different because I don't know if we're scared of it or I don't know if we just don't like it because we've been taught that different is weird, but embrace your fucking flaws, man. Cause I guarantee you that flaw is the thing that's whatever's considered a flaw. I don't even, I, that, that word just seems numb to me is the fact of like, it's usually what you're meant to be. Sometimes it's usually what you can use to turn you into this, who you really are. You know, like, I mean, sure. if you sit there <clears throat> thinking about that one flaw 24 seven and wanting it to go away, you're never going to focus on what your life's journey is going to be. And if you don't take that journey, you're kind of fucked. Like, right. You know, we become isolated from people around us because of things like this. We all have positive qualities. We all have negative qualities. There are things that I do that annoy the shit out of people. I'm sure, man. I'm like... 
I've been told by my friends, you are like the corniest fucking version of a comedy movie used car salesman that I've ever seen. <clears throat> and I know that's got to be annoying sometimes, you know, my constant joking, my constant references to like humor to like deal with situations and stuff. But <clears throat> it's also it's also who I am. You know what I mean? It's how I react and it's how I cope with shit in the world, man. I use comedy relief. And so, you know, tense situations. I was bullied a lot as a kid, man. I'm six foot four, 255 pounds. Nobody bullies me today. Um, <clears throat> nobody has in years. But as a kid, I was a small kid and I had freckles and I was goofy and I wore glasses and all this kind of stuff. You know what I mean? All these things that you kind of, you know, that we put on these, that we put on the goofy kid sure you know and and like to be honest man like once you get to know me and again i don't like to toot my own horn man but if i don't say it like how are people going to get to know i'm a pretty smart person man i'm a well-educated individual i'm well-rounded i have a lot of interesting hobbies and once people get to know me they're like oh wow man you're like a really cool fucking guy and you know, I, I oftentimes reciprocate that because getting to know people, people are cool. There are very cool, cool qualities about people. But I think that you have to seek those out, man. You can't just, I mean, we are so cookie cutter as a society. And there are a lot of people who really are just kind of numb and just going through the motions out there. But there are unique hidden treasures in individuals out there, man. And the thing is, is you have to fucking, you have to knock on every door. You have to knock on every door. They might all be painted green, but the person behind one of these green doors is going to be completely unique. You know what I mean? <clears throat> all I can say to that is <laughs> thank you for explaining out of the blank podcast. <laughs> <laughs> I'm fucking the salesman that doesn't go away. Like, hey, hey, you forgot to sign the census. Take the fucking census. We got to vote. Yeah. We got to vote. Amen. Amen, you know. And <clears throat> that's good. You know what I mean? We need people like us in this world. We really do. The world needs people like you and I, man. And guys like Robert Rice and guys, you know, there's been a few guys that I can't, the names elude me, you know. There's been a few guys on the show. I've only recently gotten into your show. I found out about it recently. And so I haven't had a chance to listen to all 500 and something amazing episodes of your show. I don't recommend it. That's too much of me for anybody. <laughs> <laughs> you know, <sighs> I think you're a pretty cool guy, man. You I, know, I, appreciate I would it. like to get to know more about you. And you're the guy, you know, me and you had this conversation today. You don't open up a lot. You want to crack all the nuts, but you don't want to be cracked. <clears throat> so yeah, the one I because the one time I even showed an inclination of a nut getting cracked, I got more shit than I've ever heard in my entire life. To where the point where I sent you that episode that I did, that was a yep. big thing for me. The whole entire time was he was trying to get me to open up, and he got it because he got me so flustered about the world where I got really fucking into it, and then he hit me with those questions, and I was like, "Damn, this is whoa!" Like. But it was it was nice. It felt good. I still love that conversation. But absolutely, I, I would be lying if I said I didn't think about I didn't want it up. Only on the concept of I don't I I I I don't like giving people my stress. I'm more than happy to take in somebody else's. But it's just the world is so fucking negative, and the fact that some people are completely blind to it or don't want to open up to it is just fucking ridiculous. And I mean, yeah. I can, How I, does that even happen, bro? How do we become so blind as a society, as a world, to the needs of people around us, man? It's to the individual up, needs. We're our heads up our ass, dude. We're like an ostrich with our head in the sand. And the whole factor is because that's what's been told to us to play it safe. Worry about yourself, not another individual. I, for so long, wanted to do that. I wish people, I wish I could have a fucking log cabin where I could never get a text from anybody and just be able to do this all day. <laughs> but that's not how life works. Every day mm -hmm. I'm out, I'm like, oh, today's a me day. I'm going to go out and relax. A million fucking DMs, a million fucking messages. I had to straight up take a break off social media only on the factor of it's not that I, I just need me. I need to right. deal with everything that's going on in my life and trying to condense it down. And then I can give love back to the world. But everyone talks about, well, how do we get the world to change? How do we get love to get spread? It starts with you. 
But that's yep. that's it's not talking about the inner issue inside of yourself. It's talking about just take the step to start loving people. Everyone right. talks about self care, and I think that's the biggest line of horseshit I've ever heard. And the reason why is you wouldn't need self care if we weren't so fucking miserable in life. Everybody's right. miserable to one another to the point where you go, I had a long week at work. I need to relax and make a me day. You wouldn't need that me day if life wasn't so fucking unbearable. Everything is right. crazy. it's fucking crazy twisted. Back when like you used to hear about like. The Grinch that stole Christmas, the whole town loved each other and sang, we don't need to do that, but let's go to Burning Man and fucking get, do acid. I don't know. (laughs) Right? You know, it's about community, man. You know, we addressed this a little bit in the last uh, conversation that we had with organizations and stuff. We join these organizations and then we don't want to be part of the organization. We don't want to contribute to the organization. If we don't want to be a part of the organization. It's real simple. Don't join the organization. But if you're going to join with a group of people, you're there as common minded individuals to promote an idea. So promote the idea. Self pride is pride in your associations. I'm not going to associate myself with people that I'm not proud to be associated with. If I don't want you to know about it, I'm not going to be a part of that group. Plain and simple. And when we are part of a group, and we all are part of a group, we're part of the human race. And this me, self-care shit like you're talking about, we wouldn't need self-care if everybody else was caring for us and about us. If we were caring about everybody else, we wouldn't have time for the me shit. And there is time, I mean, there is a certain degree of like me time that needs to be spent with ourselves um, so that we can get to know ourselves. It's and being in the public minutes, spotlight. It's 30 seconds to 10 seconds. I can tell you right now, if you do it right, it, it'll, it'll come out pretty fucking fast. Absolutely. Look at yourself in the mirror and say, I'm proud of me. Look yourself dead in the eyes and say, I'm proud of what I did today. <laughs> are you or are you not? <laughs> can you say that? Thank you for turning <laughs> that into something completely different than what I was hinting at with the whole left hand situation. But okay, I like yours a lot better. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, you know, I mean, like, that's all it takes, man. If you can look yourself in the eye in the mirror for 10 seconds a day and say, I'm proud of how I treated people today. I'm proud of what I did today. And I'm proud of the person that I am. You can't lie to yourself. You're going to know. I mean, if you're sitting there saying that and you're looking at yourself in the eye and you know that you fucked somebody over, are you really proud that you fucked somebody over? Are you proud that you made fun of somebody today? Are you proud that you bullied somebody today? Are you proud that you were an asshole? Are you proud that you pulled up in traffic? And like, so the guy in front of you, he's having an off day and, and he fucking made a mistake in traffic. Are you proud that you, that you road raged on him and that you fucking made him feel like shit and that you gave him something else to distract him since he's already having some sort of issue? Stop and think about what the fuck is going on in another person's life before you say something to that person. Before you are a fucking dick to somebody, stop and think about what kind of a day you're having and what kind of a day they might be having. Maybe you're having tits fucking top of the world day. Is that person? We're in the middle of a fucking global pandemic right now. It may or may not be real. <laughs> Nobody fucking knows. And everybody's confused. And fucking, we got people telling us, wear masks and don't wear masks and do this and don't do that and fucking go outside and don't go outside. And, and it's okay to be around each other and it's not okay to be around each other. It's mass fucking confusion, man. And fucking everybody is dealing with that shit. And everybody is dealing with something at home. People are dealing with sick people at home. Every time I go to the store and I come back, I feel like I have a sore throat. It's been going on for months, man. It's all in my head sometimes, but it fucking makes me stressed it puts me on edge because i have people at my house that if i make sick they're fucked if i get sick the people at my house are fucked i have children that rely on me i have people in the world that rely on me and so i may not be having the best day in the world or you might not be having the best day in the world and we need to stop and think about that before we interact with each other there's a lot of shit going on especially right now and buy your fucking shirt with the sheep drinking (laughs) kool-aid you know we buy into so much bullshit and we don't look into things for ourselves man like independent research and study on things is the most important thing you can do as a human being um for yourself okay we are taught things and we're given information and we buy into it we just fucking without we just blindly like all right here it is feed me the bullshit and then give me some kool-aid to wash it down because it tastes sweet man And if it fucking kills me, it kills me. And I'm going to do it with my eyes closed blindly and all be damned. (laughs) 
You know what I mean? Stop and look around the world around us, man. Empirical evidence is your number one source of information, man. As an observer, you have the tools. You have the necessary equipment to see what's happening in the world around you. You have the ability to evaluate people. You have the ability to evaluate what's happening. Stop and do it, man. Just take a look around. Quit buying into the bullshit. Quit listening to what fucking people are telling you. Fucking investigate it yourself, man. Take 30 minutes a day and go, like, get off of social media. Get off of Facebook. Quit bitching about shit that people are telling you is happening and see it for yourselves, man. Interact with the world. Interact with knowledge. Educate yourself. <clears throat> Quit acting a damn fool. We all have these, like, I don't know what, how education got to be so low on like our priority list man like we need to look into things the media tells us things and we buy it the i want fucking... you to put that on a shirt real quick i want you to put educate yourself quit being a damn fool that is <laughs> that is freaking priceless dude i can have that shirt made and in your box today <laughs> like on the way to you <laughs> That's freaking it's priceless and it's robert rice riceless I was trying to do Price, but I kept realizing that's not his last name. I don't yeah. know why. It's the, it's the Captain Price from Modern Warfare is what gets me. Right? Yep. And you know, he he has that – I think we talked about this last yeah, time. He has that demeanor about him. Well, <laughs> you know? Look, man, please promote your car page at least so people can find you, dude. This has been an awakening podcast, if anything. We have literally a full, like – I, almost two hours of just motivation about honestly if anybody takes anything away from this please take away his links take you know find this guy find his cars find his customization find how awesome of a human being this person is but seriously find your find who you are i know that's a big question even i'm looking for that too but at the same time it doesn't mean in the process of shutting every other thing out there out just to find that one thing you'll come across you know it actually is an incorporation you need to incorporate the things around you and into your life to find out who you are, man. We don't find out who we are without finding out who other people are because we are all, we all share common links. We all share common bonds. We all share common, you know, hopes, dreams, desires. <clears throat> we share common fears. Um, there's only so many things that we can love or that we can hate or that we can fear out there. And there's a lot of us. So there are people that are like us out there. There are people who are like each individual, you know, each individual is an individual, but there are people who have similarities. Seek them out. Be good to one another. Find those similarities and, and build on them. You know, if we look for, if you look for problems, you will find problems. If you right. look for a flaw in an individual, you'll find it. That's, that was, you're tossing out too many fortune cookie quotes. You got to <laughs> pick one and roll with it's, that sucker. It's true, though, man. You know what I mean? They, 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 they make those little quotes for a reason. Um, if, you do, if you do look for problems, you're going to find this shit, man. Like, if you're not looking for it, you're not going to find it. You might stumble across it, but if you're looking for positivity, if you're looking for something good, you're going to find that. That's what we need to do. You know, you asked me about my links. I am at Rusty's uh, underscore customs. It's spelled just like it sounds. Um... You can find me on Instagram. I don't really do a whole lot of other social media. There are some other social media platforms that I'm on, but I concentrate mostly on Instagram. And, you know, I'm always willing to have a conversation, man, with people. If you listen to this podcast and you disagree or agree with what I have to say, hit me up, man. Let's have a conversation about it, man. Let's talk about it. It's always good to get a different perspective on things, another point of view. Um, by being open-minded and learning other people's points of views, we learn a lot about ourselves. And that has been an episode of Out of the Blank Podcast. Now, everyone listening, go off for a smoke because I sure as hell need one.